Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. Which famous saying isn't really true in your opinion? In Poland we have a stupid saying that goes only the guilty one explains himself. Don't know if there's an English equivalent. Best I can think of is really a saying or common phrase but you shouldn't be nervous unless you have something to hide. It's typically used in dramatic media to pin the blame on someone for something when they may just be nervous because they are in an unfamiliar environment and that naturally makes someone uncomfortable. Not to mention they are usually being interrogated in order to get them to confess to something even if they didn't do it. Edit, hey everyone, I get it, there are several better ways to say what I said. You can stop replying with the same three things. Please. Ah, shitty parents do that. He's scared that means he's guilty. Maybe a child's natural reaction to a grown man shouting at them happens to be fear. Yeah, being nervous does not equal guilt. Maybe. He who smelt it dealt it. It specifically refers to flatulence, but has a similar concept. Said the rhyme, did the crime. Do what you love and the money will follow. I did what I loved for almost 20 years. The money did not follow. Yep. If my passion had been to be a street mime, I'd be living under a bridge instead of in a house. Living in a box under a bridge. Possibly with a rope as well. At least things can't get any worse. Add a headache. Colin. Could be raining. I mean, a lot of famous sayings contradict each other. Do birds of a feather flock together or do opposites attract? Is it out of sight, out of mind or does absence make the heart grow fonder? Also my mom always told me quit while you're ahead, but my dad always said quitters never win, so now I'm not sure how to end this game of Monopoly. Haste makes waste but he who hesitates is lost. Early bird catches the worm, yet the second mouse gets the cheese. I'm sweating like a pig. Pigs don't sweat. That's why they roll in mud to cool off. I slept I like a baby. Meaning you woke up crying every two hours with shit in your pants. What kind of coke head, never mind. Deleted. If anyone cares, it originates from cooking imagery. To roast and baste the pig makes it sweat. Thus to sweat like a pig means you're sweating under severe duress, cooking lol, or by another playful turn of words, you're so hot you're roasting. Edit, I'm wrong. Grew up with my gran telling me this but someone linked a pretty cool article below about the phrase coming from smelting. I love it when things that seem incorrect have their origins explained in a completely different context than one would think. That's why I like sweating like a whore in church better. In my school it was sweating like a pedo in a Barney outfit. Everything happens for a reason. I can't prove this is wrong, but I have a suspicion. I hate this saying so much. My wife and I lost our first child, stillborn, and found out on her birthday. People regurgitated that stupid line to us so much. It makes me clench my fists in cold anger whenever I hear it. My wife lost a three-year-old nephew. When people say this to her it destroys her. I get that it's hard to come up with a response or even words when you hear a story like that, and most people are genuinely just trying to be nice, but after you go through it it's absolutely the worst thing to hear. What is the reason a child has to die? Well, everything does happen for a reason. It's just that the reason has more to do with the blind, mechanical nature of the universe than the person saying it would like to think it does. Everything happens because of a cause. Reason, to me, implies that there's some kind of goal the whole universe moves towards. I think there's no goal, just a source. So yeah, things don't happen for a reason, but they do happen with a cause. There's no such thing as a bad student, or follower, only a bad teacher, or leader. I've been all of the above, and there definitely are bad students and bad followers. I was teaching sociology to master's students, and one girl said my dad says nobody has a reason to be poor if they don't want to. Masters. They were about to become teachers. Imagine someone like that in a modern school. Edit, I am not even dealing with the people saying that it's true though. It's not, it's a hell of a lot more complicated, it's not laziness as one person so helpfully suggested. I am not having this discussion. Your beliefs are pure prejudice and not based in reality. Thanks for reminding me why I loathe society. It really helps to actually be informed on issues before puking out your opinions. And a master's student in a social field is expected to be more informed than the poor are lazy idiots on Reddit. Lol I had a professor who had a similar student. 
student wanted to be a social worker, but didn't want to work with poor people. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. True at times, but definitely not always the case. Researchers have found that whatever doesn't kill you, messes you up for a really long time, and you're lucky if you ever get it together. Dennis Miller There was a Norm MacDonald version along the lines of what doesn't kill you makes you extremely weak and will probably kill you the next time. Shoot yourself in the leg with a 9mm to build up tolerance to larger calibers. Ah dude that shit works, I've been doing that with my left leg and now when I shoot it I don't even feel it. I also can't walk with it anymore, but that's probably unrelated. Whatever doesn't kill you probably gives you PTSD. Thank you for the silver. At least now I can ward off vampires with this comment. Love means never having to say you're sorry. No. No, no, number. Love means always saying you're sorry when you make your partner feel bad. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Said no one in a happy marriage ever. Some of the best and simplest marriage advice every given is never hesitate to say you're sorry, it costs you nothing and can mean everything. You can sleep when you're dead. No, we all need sleep now. I joke that sleep is for the weak. No that is not a typo. I like to be well rested for work. Ha <laughs> ha. I say this a lot, but I always follow it up with, which will be really soon if I don't get some sleep. If you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best. Yes. You're not a catch just because you have your best moments. You still have issues you need to work on. You shouldn't expect everyone to be able to handle your worst moments, and shrugging off the people that can't handle you as people that don't deserve you is toxic. Patience is reserved for people who are trying to fix themselves, not for people that shift blame. And even then, not everyone is in the right frame of mind to do that. Everyone has their limits, and you shouldn't blame them because you go past them. Yes. You're not a catch just because you have your best moments. Your worst, he said and softly sighed. Your worst, he said again. Your worst is loud and pompous pride. And fucking other men. Your worst is being rude on dates. To waiting staff, he said. Or all the heaps of toxic trays. You store inside your head. Your worst is bad, but nonetheless. Your best, I must admit. Your best, he said. Your best, I guess. Your best is also shit. Good things come to those who wait. Patience is definitely a virtue, however it simply cannot and should not be applied on everything. Striking while the iron is hot has proven to be much more to the point for me than being patient. I think both are valid. You need to combine those and it results in the following. Patiently wait for an opportunity and then don't miss that opportunity. Patience is a virtue when used to your advantage. Don't let your patience go to waste. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady will finish, but not win. Yeah, slow and steady only wins if you're lucky enough that the hare is dumb and takes a nap, but he could still leave you in the dust if he wants to. The hare represents people in general, motivation comes in short bursts then on January the 7th everyone stops going to the gym. Fast and steady wins. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me, you can't get fooled again. George W. Bush. Fool me three times, F asterisk CK the peace signs, load the chopper, let it rain on you. I read somewhere that he didn't want to say shame on me because he didn't want it being clipped and taken out of context, but then made it worse. What he should have said, then, is fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, well you know how it ends. I don't like to rag on politicians who make flubs while public speaking, because public speaking is hard, especially if every word you say is going to be preserved forever. This one, however, was especially hilarious. Wisdom comes with age. Wisdom is not a rite of passage. It does not arrive automatically if you live long enough. Wisdom comes with experience and true reflection. More often than not old age turns up on its own. You don't have to be old to be wise. My father told me, you can grow up without growing old. What doest kill you makes you stronger. Nope it might leave you traumatized for the rest of your life. What doesn't kill you give you unhealthy coping mechanisms and a dark sense of humor. Love conquers all. Update, it does not. 
I will name my child love and raise them to be the ultimate conqueror. They will take the world. Distance makes the heart grow fonder in my experience, distance makes the heart move on. Edit, another variation of this saying is absence makes the heart grow fonder, I've heard both, I think in this context absence and distance are similar, the meaning isn't specifically physical distance. Depends on time scale. Like a week or two apart is totally different than months or years. True, it's normally more than a month's time, that's about how much time it takes for people to start to change and grow apart, less than a month does make the reunion more exciting. Time away from someone either makes you realize how you can't exist without them, or realize how easy it is to exist without them. Yes, absolutely. Either miss them and wish you were sharing the current experience with them, or you're glad to be away from them.